Hey there, how are you? Mind if I join you? All right. So here we are today, um, back again, doing another one of my famous videos. Um, so today I'm gonna talk a little bit about another gun I acquired. Um, and I'm gonna give you a brief history about it, about it as well, like I've done in the past. Uh, so basically, um, what we have here is um, a Model 16. This is a Model 16 J. Stevens Arms and Tool Company uh, 32 rimfire crack shot. Uh, 32 rimfire, 32 short rimfire, sorry. Very, very hard to get these days. Um, this is actually a lever operated rolling block, okay? So what you have here is you have the lever, okay? You have the chamber, you put your shell in there, right? You close it, and then bang, goes the bullet when you're ready to fire. And then when you're done, you open the lever uh, operated rolling block again. So you pull the lever down, opens the chamber, you're round, you take your round out, and you're all set. Okay, so this firearm is obviously safe. I've never fired it, nor will I probably. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. This was actually produced in 1900 to about 1913. Um, this one here, based on the serial number, was probably in the early 1900 time frame. Um, beautiful little gun, uh, rifle bore, very nice, uh, very nice condition for its age. Uh, this is a takedown model as well. So what I'm going to do here is actually just show you real quick. So what you can do. Screw this here, okay, and then the barrel actually comes off. The barrel comes off here, two separate pieces, right? So anyway, so we're just gonna put that back together for now. So hold on one second here. And then, <laughs> okay, we're just gonna put that barrel back on. Okay, and okay, it's safe, firearm safe. We're just gonna set that down for a moment. So basically where it all started was uh, in 1850 uh, by a man named Joshua Stevens. Uh, he started, he founded the Massachusetts Arms Company with a couple gentlemen, uh, two namely uh, Horace um, Smith and Daniel Wesson. If, uh, if you're into firearms or if you don't even have to be, uh, you're going to know those names. So they went on later in uh, later years to form Smith & Wetson, actually. Uh, very popular and uh, time-attested name there. Uh, in 1864, um, Josh Stevens, Stevens left and formed his own company uh, called the Stevens Arms Company. Um, oops, sorry, my camera lady here is getting comfortable. Um, so in 1864, he founded the Stevens Arms Company. Uh, and then in 1883, I believe, he um, he bought the Massachusetts Arms Company that he originally helped found. Um, so a year or two later, or whatever it was, he changed the name to, he reorganized the company, restructured, incorporated it into the J. Stevens uh, Arms and Tool Company. Uh, they were they were very big into making tools at that point as well. Uh, one of their main main things. Um, in about 1896, a gentleman by the name of Mr. I.H. Page, I believe, uh, bought the company um, from Josh Stevens. And they got into cars, the Stevens Duria Car Company as well. Uh, they were doing all, all sorts of that. Uh, they went on to make the, um, the crack shot here. They, many, many, many firearms were made by Stevens. Very popular name in the early, uh, early 1900s uh, and going on to uh, 1910, 1915. Um, this just just one more one more point to mention here. This one here actually uh, sold for new for about four dollars, brand new, which is quite amazing. Um, so anyway, so this is where the story gets somewhat interesting. In 1915, the J. Stevens Company was actually sold uh, to the New England Westinghouse Company. Now, the only reason the New England Westinghouse Company bought this, it was, which was based out of U.S. as well, uh, the only reason they bought the J. Stevens uh, Firearms Company was 
to produce 1.8 million Mosin Nagant, um, I'm sorry, pronunciation, I'm not sure, Mosin Nagant um, rifles for Russia. So Tsar Nicholas II actually put out this contract and said, you know, all these different firearms companies are going to be making the, these for the, for the First World War. Um, so uh, Tsar Nicholas II actually put out a contract. So this, they were being produced in the U.S. for Russia. Um, so things went down. And obviously, if, if you've heard of the name Tsar Nicholas II, you know what happens. Uh, they come, uh, the uh, New, Westing, New England Westinghouse Company never actually got paid, obviously, uh, for these guns. So anyway... Uh, they, what they did was they sold them to the U.S. Um, the government, the military, and all this um, to recoup some of the money. So in about 1920, um, the New England Westinghouse Company was doing pretty poorly uh, through that time. Uh, so uh, it was bought out by another firearms company. You're going to know this name if you've, if you've dealt with firearms at all. Um, so the Savage Arms Company actually bought out the, the Stevens name in 1920 from New England Westinghouse. Um, they produced firearms under the Stevens name, Savage Stevens, probably for, for, for many, many years. They did stop production for a time. I can't remember the date exactly, but I know in 1999, they started up with the name again, Savage Stevens. And um, it's a company that you know, you know, I, I own, I think, two other Savage firearms, uh, a Mark II um, Heavy Barrel 22, which is a fantastic firearm. Um, and they do make your budget shotguns as well. Stevens Shotguns is a very good name. Um, you know, your, av your, your, your budget entry-level firearm um, beat up, beat up gun, truck gun, throw it in your truck. You don't mind if it gets bruised up a little bit. Um, but yeah, so there you go. There's a little bit of history behind the J. Stevens Arms and Tool Company. Um, quite a fascinating story. I didn't know much about it until I got this one, which was just recently, actually. Thank you so much for the person who gave it to me. Um, I did a bit of research, and I just I just love the story behind it. Quite amazing. Um, I believe it was 1907 when Joshua Stevens passed away. Um, but obviously, his name and legacy carried on with some great firearms and some great history and story behind it. Um, so, yeah. So, that's that. Uh, thank you for watching another one of my videos. I will turn the camera on to my beautiful assistant real quick here. Thank you, Marika, for all your help. You're welcome. And there we have it. If you have any requests about uh, any specific model or make of firearm you want to see or you want to learn more about, uh, please let me know. And um, I'd love to uh, keep doing these videos. So um, until the next one, thank you again for watching. Have a great day.